I'm here with Brian Kahn inside Target. He's a uh, writer for HomeTheaterReview.com. Brian, why is the big game such a good time to buy a new TV? Well, at this time of year, there's a whole bunch of sales going on. There's a lot of really competitive pricing, and let's face it, yeah, when you have a big game going on, it's the perfect time to have friends over and show off your latest purchase. I remember the days when plasma was king. Now you hardly find them anymore. Do I go plasma, LCD, or LED? Well, plasmas are still the choice of video files, but there's only a few companies still making them. So chances are most of the TVs you're going to find are going to be a variant of LCD. LED is a type of LCD TV, but it's backlit by LEDs as opposed to bulbs. Now, LEDs typically will be brighter and more energy efficient than their counterparts. So it sounds like if, uh, if all things equal, I'd go with the LED, LCD. Correct. Most likely that would be your best option in most cases. Let's talk about 4K. Uh, that's a big, big thing we've heard of. Do I buy a 4K TV just yet? Will I be able to watch the Super Bowl in 4K? Chances are, that right now, you're not going to find anything with a 4K broadcast. Uh, however, 4K is coming. There are some 4K video servers now available, and some of the popular streaming services have announced plans to stream in 4K. Uh, but right now, there's not a lot of 4. There's not a lot of 4K content that you and I can get our hands on at this point in time. So skip the 4K. You know, unless you're looking for the, just to have the the biggest, baddest TV on the market. 4K is really not going to get you a whole bunch more than 1080p at this point in time. I see two 50-inch TVs. One's $500, one's 750 How do I decide between those? This is one of those instances where you really need to come down and see the TVs for yourself because, as you can tell, the specifications are fairly similar, except for one is LED versus LCD. But if you look at the TVs, you can see, first of all, there's a stylistic difference. One has a, a more attractive, thinner bezel than the other. But also, the image on the $750 TV is sharper, it's brighter, it's got more contrast, and it's just an overall better quality image than the $500 TV. And that's something that you need to come in and see for yourself, and something you're not going to see when you're shopping online. If I want the best TV they have in stock, do I just go with the most expensive TV on the floor? Not necessarily, because lots of times price will be determined by the features a TV has, and you may not necessarily need all of the features that a certain TV has. For example, some TVs will have a Wi-Fi capability built in, but if, you're, if your TV already has an Ethernet cable run to it, you don't need the built-in Wi-Fi, and why pay for it? And tell me about these smart TVs. Almost every TV nowadays is smart. Do I need to get a smart TV, and what should I look for if I want that? You don't need a smart TV. However, it's, it's a nice feature to have. A lot of the smart TVs have built-in apps, and they'll let you access a variety of streaming services or news services, and that can come in real handy because that way you can get all your streaming services built into your TV, and you don't need to add external boxes or other appliances to be able to access those various streaming services. And what you'd look for is think about what apps are important to you, what streaming services would you use, and does the TV you're looking at have those apps? But generally, for you know, less than $100, you can add that on at any time. You can add it on later on, but then it's just more cabling, more boxes, and more, more things to connect. However, if you have the chance to add it on at the time of purchase, it's built in, it's integrated, and if the price difference is, is minimal, why not? The number one question I hear all the time is, how big of a TV can I get for my room? What's the rule of thumb? Well, there's lots of different rules of thumb. Most of them boil down to about 10 inches for every foot of viewing distance. One of the things I would recommend to buyers is before you come in to shop for your TV, measure your viewing distance from your television. And when you come in to go look at TVs, stand that distance from the TV. Does the TV look too big to you, too small? And that way you can judge for yourself what the right size is going to be for you. Finally, I've heard don't put the TV over the fireplace. Everyone wants to put it up high over the fireplace. Is that going to kill your neck? Well, you want the TV to be within about 15 degrees of your, eye, of your eye height. So unless your fireplace is real low or your couches are real high, chances are that's going to be uncomfortable. One of the things you might want to do is put something up at that height for a few days before you come in to buy the TV. Look at it and see if it's comfortable for you to be sitting where you're going to be sitting and looking at something at that height. And at the end of the day, you get this TV in your living room, you've got your friends over, you got the party set up, you're watching the big game, it looks great. How do you feel? 
you feel great. It's nice to have a great big TV, have your friends over, watch the big game, and, and watch it on a beautiful screen. What more could you ask for?